All right, they say you have to say to show that you have some credibility. I don't like doing this. I always feel like I'm bragging, but I did this and I understand it pretty damn well. And this is thermochemistry, and this is all of the stuff that happens when heat of reaction, heat of uh, solution, and all of the different things that happen. And, and I, I did this for a very long time in extreme details. So if you don't think I understand what I'm doing, that's fine. And if you don't, I think this is all doodles that I did just to have a good time, well, good for you. This is, this is serious stuff. And, and so I feel as confident and, and qualified as anybody that is breathing oxygen currently to, to speak about this. You know, I mean, I got down to pretty deep into this, so... And then I not only did that, I did the, uh... I did the, um, lab work, too. You know, what happened and all the different calorie changes and so forth. It always ends up, you get to the very end, and it ends up with electricity. It ends up with electric power. That's what heat is, is electric. That's all it is. Heat is nothing more than elect electrons moving, forcing themselves into somebody else's region. And they don't even really realize that, I don't think, in modern physics right now. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, oh, they get excited, they get excited, they jump energy levels. Well, what do you mean they jump energy levels? No, they don't. Well, they might. But that's because they're being forced by other electrons coming in. And then you've got to sit there for a couple minutes and the other electrons will flow back out again. That's all it is. Nothing changed in there. Nothing more than those extra electrons. And I can see those electrons. So we're way ahead of this on you know, all of this stuff. Just by looking at light. Just trying to buy to understand what light is. And then you understand what magnet magnetism is. And then, you know, the things that attract and push away from each other, they only have extra electrons inside of them. There's the different types of magnetism. There's attractive type. There's a type to push away. There's this and that. But... The, the, all it is is they have an excess or a depletion of electrons. So they, it, it, on one end and the other and so forth, and they, 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 that's how they work. All right, I just told you that the, the, the different types of magnetism depend on how many electrons they have. <laughs> this is so simple. Ferromagnetism, which is iron, and ferry magnetism occur when the magnetic moments in a magnetic material line up spontaneously. Now listen to this, at a temperature below the so-called Curie temperature. That means they've taken enough electrons out. That's all they do. Give me the electrons. Give me. Okay, where are we? Oh, all right, we're getting right close to this Curie temperature. Okay, boom. Let's produce a net magnetization because we have either lost enough, well, we've lost enough magnetism because they say it has to be below a certain temperature. So they've got a bunch of electrons just floating around in there at 80 degrees. Everything's fine. You get down to 70 degrees or something, they go 50 degrees, some more of them go. You get 40 degrees, boop. You've lost enough of them that they go into magnetization. As simple as that. So you're going to say to me, well, Roger, where are all these extra electrons hiding? Well, they, they collect in the regions between the atoms. Now, atoms will always have a circular nature to them. That's just the way material bonds into a sphere. All right, just the way the Earth does, just the way the Sun does, just the way the Moon does, just the way all the planets do. You, these things form into spheres. In between those spheres where they attach, like inside of here, there's a zillion little tiny pockets in there. And they're going to have little tiny particles in there that are going to be excess. Those are the things that move. You put a potential on there, and those things are the ones that are going to move through there. The rest of it doesn't move. You put electricity, a little bit of electricity on here, nothing happens in here except the electrons come out of there, and they go through a wire or wherever they go, and they light a light or whatever they do. But this thing doesn't change that much. I mean, you might lose a few little bits and pieces here and there, but you, you, all the stuff that goes out is doing a lot of work. What's what changes here is almost nothing because there is no material moving in here. What's moving is the little bits that go and they go right through. All right, so here's what happens to our Earth and our, our atmosphere here. This is called RLC. Well, what does that mean? Resistor inductor 
capacitor. What does that mean? It means when you send out current through a circuit which it consists of a resistor which is normally a little resistor and it goes that runs through there well this is the resistor because it's all the electrons and all the particles that are in space being spit out by the sun so they are what we are flowing through crushing and spinning through and everything's going and we're all being ripped through the milky way everything's spinning the whole nine yards is going crazy so everybody's scrubbing through whatever is in the atmosphere in between everything else and that is ether these are these particles the particles just like this they're everywhere 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 it's not, it's not empty out here. It's loaded with them. They're coming off the sun in copious buckets. Now, so what are we doing? Well, we have an atmosphere, too. They have an atmosphere, a sun. And at the corona, it's millions of degrees. It's 6,000 down here. The reason it's 6,000 here and so much here is because it is spinning through and scrubbing out here. That's causing the heat. We are spinning through and scrubbing through, and that is causing our heat. 56,000 and about 80 or 90 degrees down here. So, what does that mean? We got resistance. Resistance, do that and you're going to feel heat. Now, so we got heat. We also have push of electron to electron, because that's all we have is electrons out here. That's our, our ionosphere, our magnetosphere, where we have collected all these electrons. There's, they're out there. They want to get down to Earth, but he's got so many out there now that we're in trouble. That's the problem. Now, and they just keep coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And we keep scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing. They don't just go flying off into space. They are attracted because Earth is a positive, attractive capacitor. It's a capacitor. What does that mean? Capacitor means give me some, give me all that electricity. Give me what you got, man. Bring it on down here. And he says, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I got enough. I'm full of capacity right now. You, 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 just, you just said too much to me. And the capacitor said, well, what do I do now? He says, well, I don't know, man, but it's, it's, it's just going to keep coming. So what does this guy do? He says, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to get this stuff out of here, man. I'm going to explode. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow. I'm going to blow, Captain. So what happens now? We're seeing sprites. You know what a sprite is? It comes off of the earth, just like that, and explodes, trying to get the hell out. Well, once it hits the ionosphere, it gets, it gets in trouble. And it starts to tickle its way back down to earth because it can't go up there. There's too much there already. Now, what that means is it's the harder we scrub, scrub through that stuff, the more it's going to push our pole. And the pole is being pushed hard. And the more we collect, and again, it's not going to go away. I don't care how much CO2 nonsense they talk about and putting things in the atmosphere to stop CO2. Absolutely, it, will, it might help to keep the water from evaporating in places where you put enough cloud cover, it won't evaporate the water. That's possible. The heat can't get to the Earth's surface. But that doesn't mean anything. It's still collecting in the atmosphere. It's, it, and it's just a more and more and more. And the more particles you put in the atmosphere, the more the atmosphere heats up. The more the atmosphere heats up, the more reactive it gets. The more reactive it gets, the more water, the rain, and the wind, and all of those events. Tides. And, and there's no stopping this. I call it electron flooding. We're being flooded with electrons. And... And I, I don't see any way out of it. But that's what is, it, is RLC circuit. I'll show you. Uh, uh, well, let me show you. All right, this is an RLC circuit. And if you have the electricity, there's your resistor. So that pushes back against what's coming in. That's the inductor. As it spins through this ferrite coil, it induces induction, a current, a magnetic field into there. And then that's your capacitor. So. And this, these create flip-flops, and they do all kind of things. But um, it's consisting of a resistor, inductor, and a capacitor connected in series or in parallel. A series just means they go one shot. Parallel means side by side. The name of the circuit is derived from the letters uh, denoted, you know, RLC. Uh, it forms a harmonic oscillator, and it resonates in a similar way as an RLC, as an LC circuit does. But the resistor gives it 
the dampening. See, it says introducing the resistor increases the decay of these oscillations, which is also known as as damping. It it it, it um it keeps it, well. It's hard to explain, but just trust me. The, the, it, this is what the Earth is doing. It's R L C R L C. The sun is the emitter of the electricity. Boop. This is the resistor. Boop. This is the inductor, which is our our magnetic field and our our buildup of electrons, because that's what happens here. The field builds up, and you get a capacity of elect. Well, not a capacity, but you get a a field, and that just like ours, our magnetic field builds up, and then it dumps it into capacitor, and that's us. No difference whatsoever. And there in is the issue that I don't see any way out of it. I mean, there's no, you know, the, the only way would be to beam all the extra electricity into outer space, and I don't think that's going to happen. Because uh, the, the amount is just unbelievable. And I have every day people, oh, they're putting chemtrails in there, chemtrails, chemtrails, chemtrails. Well, they might be doing that. I have no idea. But I, and as a matter of fact, I know they, I've seen things that's, that do indicate they are doing that or have done that. But it doesn't matter because even the vapor trails that are up there now, they're full of particles. What do you think? They're just coming out water? No. They're full of all kinds of toxins. 3,500 chemicals, I think, is in, in jet fuel, something like that. It's absolutely insane. And they're going to come to the earth. They're going to come down here, and they're going to land on things. So we're going to, and they're causing all kinds of issues with, uh, with the pH in areas. And, uh, and because there's so many extra electrons in there, I will show you this. All right, if you don't know the issues with global warming, I don't know what, what I can say to you. But um, this is a product of global warming. You say, well, what's global warming? Global warming is we've got too many extra electrons. Case closed. That's it. We have too many extra electrons. I don't care what you say. You could throw all the carbon dioxide you want in and all the atomic bombs you want. It doesn't matter. We have a certain capacity, and we have exceeded it. Now, what happened here? What the hell is that? Well, what happened is the Earth said, I got too much electrons. Go send them back out. He's okay, no problem. It goes up. And they do literally lightning up instead of down. And then what happened? Well, it hit the ionosphere. Right? What is the ionosphere? It's a layer of almost solid electrons. All right? They don't want any more electrons. They say, I got so many freaking electrons, I want to get down. They say, no, we got so many down here, we don't want you. So they stay up here. You know, they, get, they come down. You know, of course, the sunlight comes down and penetrates, and that's just the way it works. You can't stop that. But these guys are just sort of floaters. They're just laying around. And there are floaters in every, right, right now. There's a millions and zillions of them just floating all in here, free electrons, just looking for a place to go. That's called heat. Now, and it's also called excess electrons, and it's an electrical potential. Not only is it heat, it's heat when it discharges. And it's heat when it invades. It's potential when it just sits excessively in matter. So the potential excess says, I'm out of here. Pew, up it goes. It says, hey, I just hit a freaking brick wall. And, it's, and it tries to penetrate and it glows like hell. And they say, you know, we got so much. Look at what we got up here. We just loaded, man. You've got to go back. Go back, get out of here. And they just sort of say, oh, we've got to go back. And they sort of trickle back down and get absorbed back into the atmosphere again, where we still have excessive global heating and global warming. And it's, it's not related to carbon dioxide. I'm sorry. That's just a, you know, this, it's a fallacy that that is, is going to stop. I mean, it might blanket in a little bit of the, the, the rays coming back out because you know, it will block it a little bit, I'm sure, you know, and it block it coming in. And that's really what it is, is coming in. But it's not going to do anything for going out. They, they're not going out. They don't want to go out. They want to stay here. They want to go out, but the ionosphere is so locked in now. 
it is so encapsulated they can't get out of here and they want to but now it's just oh, day by day by day it's it's overloading and we're seeing the signs every day it's getting worse and and it's going and it's you know rolling on like a roller coaster that's what i'm seeing Okay, might as well just say it. It all relates to the fact they just have no idea about what atoms are made of. And they just ad admitted this just the last week at the Royal Institute in London. They said that we, th there's no way we can possibly explain particle physics anymore. It's totally wrong. And they're right. It, it is wrong because protons are not one gigantic big ball. They're 1835 or 1837, something like that, little tiny particles. Neutron just goes into the even numbers so that you don't have a, 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 a net polarity. The odd numbers will have a net polarity. Now, the electron is way, 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 way down inside here, one little tiny bit, something like that. And that's a proton. It's 1835 of these or so. And two of these together makes a photon. And I see these. And, w and, w and let me just show you one thing, because I think... I, I had thought originally there was just one particle here and it was a dipole and I thought it's kind of hard to, to go with that because what I was seeing because of this. But then I realized these can break apart. I'll show you. Okay, regular red laser light, accelerated red laser light showing the particle. That's the Higgs fields again, the Higgs fields. These are the particles. Now these two part, and, and this is the right hand spin, that is the particle, but not seeing it like you are here. Here you're seeing the actual particle as it comes out of the accelerator and it steps down. And, and that seems to be like the wagon wheel used to go forward and all of a sudden stop and then it would roll backwards. That's what we got, <laughs> the same sort of thing. Now, you got black and white, black and white, same thing here. Now why is that? And that happens in green too. All right, so here's the key. I started looking at this. As I, I couldn't imagine how come this was so white and that yeah, black and white, black and white, and how come it's turned just totally white. Well, guess what? Then I started seeing these little black things coming back in again. See the little black ones? See the black here? Black, black, black. These little tiny black balls. That's what we had before. We had four. We had the, the red and the, you know, the, the black and white, black and white. And, and Obviously, they're separating. That's separation. I don't care how I can look at this. This is the black ones are saying get out of here, and the white ones are saying go through. And somehow the black ones came back in here. Now, I, I really don't have an explanation for that. But it, what it's telling me is the electrons are here, and whatever the dark ones you want to call them positrons, anti electrons, whatever they are, they're here. And they can separate. And it is now seems to me that this might be the particle that comes from the sun is the white one we don't get the black ones the black ones are part of our mass here and the white ones are the electrons coming from the sun like we get the double particles too we get chunks as well but we're getting a lot of excess electrons because they are the particles they could separate i didn't realize they could separate if they could separate from the black and the white i think these are the ones that are hitting us in, 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 in excessively the blacks i don't think are coming as much as the whites so the white ones are excessively adding to the heat because that's heat these are anti-heat in my world that's what i'm seeing that's heat that's not heat or, or the opposite of heat and the real crazy thing is this other one that we saw all right, so this is the crazy one. That, was that, that little white particle came through along with all the other ones that were in the regular Higgs pattern, and this one was not. It was white, and then it changed when it hit one of these, and it made that. So that is smaller than light, as far as I'm concerned. That is, uh, I don't know what to think, to be perfectly honest with you, but it would be something I think a physicist would be interested in.